Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm gonna play a training game. Uh, yesterday's game was really nice. Uh, I can't complain really. Uh, I think the only problem I had was that I misplayed uh, the opening slightly. Uh, not that I I didn't play good moves. I did play good moves, but I got good moves by accident, and I did not know what happens after castles after C3. So. Okay, let's let's just focus on this game. I'm playing Groman 1950. He's playing the Nimtso Larsen. And C5 Bishop B2 Knight F6. E3 Knight C6 Bishop B5. Okay, I'm going to play the C5 setup because I like the C5 setup. I usually don't play the critical lines. So, okay, knight f6. If bishop b5 check, now I have uh, bishop d7. I could throw in bishop g4. Or bishop f5, so that I don't have to block my bishop in. But bishop f5, bishop b5 check, knight c6, knight e5, rook c8. He can take on f6 and then take on c6 once. After knight e5 he cannot take on f6, but... It would be much safer to just play knight c6 or e6. It would also be quite safe to play a6. In that way he doesn't have a good square for his bishop. I could also play bishop g4, which prevents knight e5. So bishop g4 or bishop f5. I'm, I'm gonna play bishop g4. I like bishop g4. I usually play bishop f5 here, but to be honest, against the Rimtsu Larsen, I play this setup and I mainly guess I don't know the theory here, and since he played bishop e2, I'm happy, because now I can get in e6 and my structure is completely secure with my bishop outside of the pawn chain. He may win this bishop, but I don't think that's such a big deal. I think he should have played uh, bishop b5 check there. Okay, he plays d4, which is good, and now he is playing a Queen's Indian in reverse which is something I like and play myself. So I'm going to play knight c6, giving him the option to take on, on c5 and give up his center and develop my bishop. But he should play c4. And after he plays c4, he's going to get a position with hanging pawns or with an IQP. And I've been on the, in this case, the white side of this many times. Okay, this is, this is slightly compromising because now he's going to have hanging pawns or an IQP and he's going to have a weak kingside structure. As I said, he can take my bishop. Uh, I don't really mind. So, first of all, I can take on d5 to make sure I either grab the dark squared bishop or that after c4 his king is a bit less secure. So, cd is definitely an option, bishop e7 is an option, bishop d6 is an option, rook c8 is an option, queen c7 is an option. cd is forcing, and after c4 I would also have bishop b4 check. So I'm going to take cd first, and that way, as I said, I either get the bishop or... Uh, or he, he puts the pawn on d5. Uh, I don't think he should give up this bishop. That's a very nice bishop. Okay, so he throws this in. That's good. Okay, he takes with the pawn, as expected. Now, he's going to play c4, but for the moment it's hanging and he cannot play c4. I don't want to block my queen with bishop d6 because then d4 is not hanging. I'm extremely happy with my position for the moment because I've been, as I said, I've been on the other side of this many times 
and playing h3 g4 or in black's case h6 g5 has to be an error okay i'm going to play bishop e7 which is the most tame move however there are some tricks uh there are some tricks with knight e4 and knight f2 with bishop h4 to follow and then queen g5 or queen f6 uh, where does he wants to castle he wants to castle queen side is that even possible if he plays knight f3 here then i go knight e4 so I'm thinking about queen b6 or queen c7. I can also just play rook c8, which is the most natural move, to make sure that if he ever castles, uh, I can uh, I can put pressure on c2 straight away. Again, knight f3 is the most logical move. But then knight e4, and then he doesn't have queen d2. He would have to play c4, and then I take, takes, and he again loses not the d4 pawn, but probably to bishop b4 check. So yeah, his position is really, really dubious, I'm going to say, because I have knight b4 coming in, and, and if he plays a3, then castling queenside becomes even worse. Putting my king on f8 for the rest of the game is actually not too bad. Wow, okay, so what's the plan after knight b4? I like knight b4, I like queen b6. probably go knight b4 first so then if rook c1 I have knight a2 and if castles I have knight c2 and if c3 I have knight d3 okay so I'm going to go knight before knight before sorry not knight b5 knight before let's see what he does against this this is quite a threat By the way, thank you for the advice about the noise yesterday. It was a Windows update and it was actually pending. I got the message saying, update your Windows, blah, blah, blah. But for some reason, it already it had already used uh, my CPU power, whatever. And the, the laptop just started going, woo, 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 woo. And I updated the Windows, so it should not happen again. Uh, I don't see what he does to defend here. C3 loses the bishop on b2. Well, it doesn't really. It wins a pawn because uh, he can he can trap my knight. But winning that bishop would be awesome. Castles loses the pawn on c2, and rook c1 loses the pawn on a2. And if rook a1, then knight b4, rook a7, knight c2, check, king e2, queen b6 probably. So I don't know, this is tough. He had overextended and he had to play c4 earlier. If you if you play the queen's Indian setup, then you have to play c4 and either accept hanging pawns or, <coughs> or the isolated queen's pawn on d4. And I mean, this bishop on f3 is a really strange piece. At least if he'd played knight f3 instead of bishop f3, he would have had c3 here. And then knight d3, of course, is defended twice by the bishop and by the queen. And the d4 pawn is also defended. So, so bishop f3 is a pretty strange move. 
I mean, I can understand. Bishop f3, because if he plays knight f3, I have knight g4, winning the pawn. But maybe he has some discoveries with knight e5 or knight somewhere, attacking my knight. I don't see a way to save all the material now. Also, the bishop on e2 was very useful to give a check on b5. If, for example, g5, knight h5, then bishop b5 is annoying because I have to play king f8. Okay, so, yeah, c3, he's not going to play c3, even though it just wins a pawn for me, not more, but it misplaces his king and I get to win the bishop pair. I know I'm moving my knight twice before castling, but I think this is justified. I don't know. Maybe he's already losing here. I don't know what to suggest. I mean, King F1? Okay. I'm going to take on C2. Why not? A pawn is a pawn. Okay, and now I'm going to, of course, play knight to b4, back, and then probably play knight c6. I just stole a pawn and guerrilla warfare on the board. Also, if he does nothing, I'm going to play rook c1, queen c1, and knight d3, get the bishop. And if he wants to develop my queen, that's great. It means I have the c-file. Also, if he takes queen takes and bishop a3, that then doesn't that doesn't work. Oh no, it does work. If I take and queen takes, and I play bishop a3, yeah, okay, th this is really nice. This is really nice. I mean, I'm a clean pawn up, threatening to win the second pawn. Maybe not straight away, but because he would take on a7. But it's a clean pawn up, and his bishop is bad behind his IQP. And also, in, in IQP positions, you want to be playing knight f3, knight e5, and his knight is on d2. So I don't, I don't think he has any attacking compensation you usually get in these positions. Okay, so rook c1, queen c1, and knight d3. What could be wrong with that? If he plays bishop c1, then I play knight c6 and put pressure on the pawn on d4. So rook c1, queen c1, knight d3, he has no checks. That works. Okay, I'm going to do it. Bishop c1 would be a huge concession, and queen c1 is a huge concession, because it gives up the bishop pair. Okay. I mean, that's fine with me. I'm attacking the pawn now. So he has to go back. 
and then I'm going to play queen b6 and I'm not sure where his knight can go so that the queen could defend d4. Well, actually, maybe I don't want to take that pawn. Maybe I should not be taking on, on d4 because it opens up the bishop. But then again, it's a pawn. So queen b6, what could be wrong with queen b6? I'm going to play it. I just want to put pressure on him straight away as much as possible. I don't think my king is bad on e8. I don't see how he can get to my king. And maybe even uh, bishop a, a3 here, bishop a3 and queen a6 check. Just grabbing the other pawn, not, not the d4 pawn, but the pawn on a3. That does improve his bishop slightly. Oh, he can play knight b1. Why didn't I see knight b1? That's stupid. Okay, I did not see knight b1. I feel I should be improving my bishop with bishop d6. That gives my king d7 square. And if he plays king to g2... Yeah, bishop d6 seems like a good move, because then my bishop can get to f4, which is a very good square. So bishop d6. I'll try to play quickly, again, to, to keep the pressure going. Whoa. So I, I want to I want to play reasonably good moves quickly so that he doesn't have time to think and to regroup. His pieces are definitely not good. If he moves the knight he loses a pawn. If I play bishop f4, his bishop is probably going to go to a3 via a4, bishop a3, but then I have knight uh I then I have a5 and knight b4 completely locking the position down. Okay, king g2. Let's see what he does. If he plays rook e1 here, I'm going to castle king side. But then how scary is g5? I don't want to allow g5, so I'm just going to play bishop f4. I know my bishop is undefended, but if I can get in g5, then it will be defended. And also, if he plays rook e1, castling kingside is now much safer. And my bishop is better on f4 than on d6. And again, if a4, then I play a5, bishop a3, knight b5, knight b4. Okay, rook e1, castles king side. How safe is that, or how unsafe is that? Maybe I should just keep the pressure on the h file. And play g5. I'm not hanging the d5 pawn because the knight still defends. I want to prevent g5, h4 and g5, so I'm going to play g5. That seems reasonable. He doesn't have knight d2, he doesn't have knight c3, well what if I take? Ah, then he takes on d5. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Uh, 
Okay, g5 was a bit too much. And knight d5 also attacks my queen. So this was a bit careless. Okay, I'm going to play King F8. I am going to play King F8 because I want to keep my rook on the H file and the plan is G6, King G7. Okay. So, Queen C7 seems normal. I want to do it quickly. If he plays knight c5, I have b6. And my plan is clear. g6, king g7, and then maybe rook h4, queen c8. Ah, oh, maybe I should have played queen d8, so that I can double easier. No, but queen c7 is better to prevent bishop c1 and an easy trade. I don't know. I'm not as happy as I was. It's getting more complicated now. And I did not see a double attack on d5. So I should not have allowed this. He wants to play rook c1 now, but my bishop is still there. What is the other purpose of this move? I don't know, so I'm going to play g6. And then king g7. It's going to get messy and complicated, and I don't want to be wasting too much time. It's very important that I'm controlling... Whoa, whoa, why would he give up his rook like that? I just wanted to say it's important that I'm controlling the c1 square, and then he just gives up the exchange like that. It's for a pawn though, but I honestly don't think it's enough. I'm going to take it. And I realize that I'm not going to be able to defend the g5 pawn, but at least my king can get to relative safety. Okay, king g7 has to be correct. Okay. Now I need to defend the dark squares, so... So knight d7 seems reasonable. I definitely don't want to win the d4 pawn now. That pawn needs to stay put. I also don't want to play knight e4, opening up 
uh, for the pawn to move to d5. Okay, I like knight d7. I'm going to play knight d7. I don't think he can get to my king if my knight on d7 is defending all the squares. If he plays knight c5, uh, I'm not going to take it so that he doesn't have dc, creating a pawn majority and opening up the dark squares. I'm going to wait for him to take. I'll play b6. Well, may as well play b6 now so that he doesn't have any tricks. Or I could play knight b6 and then get my knight into c4. How good is that? But then he's going to trade. b6 or knight b6? Knight b6, knight c5, knight c4. I don't like allowing his knight to c5 because then he may have knight e6 tricks. So I'll just play b6. I want to restrict this knight as much as possible. Of course, b5 would be a dreadful mistake, because knight a5, knight c4. I realize that my knight is worse, but his knight is worse. And I have rook c8. And he doesn't. So, he doesn't have rook c1. Okay, now he wants to come into b5. I mean, I could just play a6 here. a6, queen a6, knight d4. <sighs> but maybe I should just play knight b8. a6, queen a6, knight b4, knight d4, attacking his knight, I like that, I'm going to do that, I don't want to play passively.
because then I can grab the light squared bishop at least, which is his bad bishop, but it's a good defender. And I need to speed up. I mean, I have... Whoa. What's going on? I'm sorry, something is going on. I don't know what's going on here. So I have to add another window capture. Something is going on. Uh, and let me just scrub this. Whoa, sorry, sorry for this. Now I have to waste time on this. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Okay, I managed to do it somehow. Woohoo! Okay, I don't know what happened there, but I simply lost one window capture. So he doesn't take. Uh, let me concentrate. So now I definitely play b5. Okay. Uh, he's going to play bishop f4, but everything is defended. And I can play queen d8 or queen c8. I like queen d8 for queen h4. I is it okay? Is it okay? Let me just... Okay, I I, I think it, it could be okay. Okay, uh, queen d8. Queen d8 uh, planning to play queen h4. I don't want to play f6. I never want to play f6. But if he plays bishop uh, g5, I'm going to play queen b6, forcing the knight back to e2. Oh, why did I have to waste a minute on this? Uh, I don't know what happened. S some, as I said, my software is kind of uh, weird lately and uh, seems to be messing up the recording. So as you can see, I just lost one one capture of, of my screen, which, which is partly why it's easier to play without recording. You don't have to worry about stuff like that. Okay, if he doesn't play bishop g5, then I win straight away, because I have queen h4. Aha, knight g1. Okay, that's a good plan. He wants to go knight g1. Well then, let's force the knight back. Let's force the knight back to g1 and then play queen f6. I'm not losing my queen because e5 is defended many times. Ah, does he really have those tricks? Queen takes, queen takes, knight takes. No, he doesn't. Queen d4, queen d4, knight d4. He doesn't have bishop e5 because he have another knight. And if queen takes bishop e5, then just queen takes. Yeah, he doesn't have those tricks here. He could play queen c1, but then I think rook c8 is okay. So I'll just take. Let's just double check. 
Queen d4, Queen d4, Knight d4, Bishop e5 doesn't work. Queen d4, Bishop e5, check doesn't work because of Queen e5. Okay, let's do it. I have taken the d4 pawn, which is the most problematic piece on the board for him, giving him the option to now finally breed and put pressure on my king. However, uh, now that the queens are off the board, it should just be all over. Okay, he saves the bishop. Uh, I'm going to play rook c8 because I need to activate my rook. If he plays bishop uh, d2 now, now he doesn't have bishop c3 and he also doesn't have bishop c1. So, if as long as I don't move this knight away, I'm not blundering anything and I'm going to play e5 and advance. Okay. So let's play e5, why not? If bishop e3, then knight f5. And then just keep pushing. Yeah, this this should be an easy win. Uh, now, bishop to e2 is still not a big blunder because against rook c2 he can move his dark squared bishop. But if bishop c2, I can probably just take uh, on a4. For the moment, though, I have to improve my other knight, and I also have to start pushing my pawns. So, how do I do that? I don't want to play e4 because then bishop check. Well, I could play e4 to just prevent his knight from coming in. Give my knight a square. Okay, but I definitely have to play quickly, so I'm going to play e4. Giving up some of the dark squares, but I don't think it's easy for him to get to them when c3 is controlled. And if I play d4, then he's never getting to the dark squares. This way I've prevented knight f3, and I have knight h4, knight f3. And I also have knight e5 to d3. But I need to play quickly. Okay, he takes. If he plays bishop e2 now, I'm going to play knight d4. And he doesn't have bishop c3. Ah, why did I miss that? Okay, so now I have to go back. I missed that. If if I had played rook c2, then he takes and has bishop c3.
Okay, bishop c3 is coming now, so I don't want to be pinned all over. And I wanted to defend d5 in anticipation of knight c3. But if knight c3 now, now I have knight g5. Or no, I don't have knight g5, because my rook is hanging. I still have to move my rook. Is, is the screen okay? I hope this doesn't disappear again. I keep checking it, but... Okay, I can play knight c4, because if he plays bishop d4, then I take it, and after bishop... Uh, c8, I can take on e2. Okay, I have to play quickly, I have to play quickly. I just need to get my rook out of the way. I need to unpin my rook. After that, everything will be fine. No tactical problems. Okay, he does this. But what happens if I take? Take bishop c8, knight, knight e2. Take, uh, knight takes rook b8. Okay, that works. And if bishop d7, I have knight d6. Okay, I think I've consolidated. Now I need to get my king into the position. But I do have to be careful about king e7 because then knight c6 forks my pieces. Uh, Okay, I'm going to improve my king. I don't really like trading pawns here, but... And I still don't have king e7, I have to be careful about that. So I need to play... Rook b7 for example to stop the fork and if bishop c6 then rook b6 and now here and if he checks me i can take the bishop Okay, now finally my king is getting in, and I can prevent his king from getting in. Okay, now I feel safer. His king cannot approach my pawn. Okay, does he really want to take there? I don't think so. So let's improve my king. He can take here and then take the knight, but then I take on b4.
Okay, now he cannot do that because my knight is defended and his knight now has to move. I have to play quickly. I have to play quickly or I'm going to lose. Threatening a big fork, so let's prevent that. I don't know if this was correct, but I wanted to do it nonetheless because I saw this. I don't think I can blunder my rook when it's defended by the pawn. I don't really want to trade these pawns, but I think I have to. For the moment nothing is hanging. Except the f7 pawn. Has a check here, has a check here. I'll try to be quiet until this game is over to make sure I don't mess up. I just want to play rook g2 and win the knight. Mm, 
Now if he plays knight e2, which he has to play, then I win the pawn and it's over. Okay. Whew. It wasn't easy, but it's never easy. Yeah, he probably has to play either bishop e2 or knight e2. I don't think there is anything else. And I just have to watch out for forks. I mean, I may even give up the exchange here and still win. That's probably the cleanest win. Probably, yeah. Let's just do that. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm not going to stalemate him. I mean, I'm not a moron. Maybe I could stalemate him. Okay, of course, if he goes here, I play I play g5 and win. Okay, uh, let's see this. So let's let's just see. Uh, let's just see. Firstly, why the screen got messy? I don't know why the screen got messy. Uh, so let's turn off the engine. Why? Why, when you press analysis board, why does the engine turn on automatically? I really hate that. Then it gives away something. Okay, let's just see if this was still theory. Bishop g4 is kind of weird. Sorry guys, I'm not going to be playing another game. Uh, I have to do my tactical training for the day. So this has been played a couple of times. H3 has never been played, or three times. And G4 has definitely never been played. I'm going to be declining challenges, sorry guys. So this position is already, I'm gonna say very bad. And then I had some problems after Queen B6, Knight B1, King G2 and Bishop F4 when he played Knight C3. I don't know, I think this is okay. The critical variation, yeah, he, he just lost the exchange. But here, this is important and he has to go back. Now I take, queen takes. He has pressure here. So you probably play queen c4, yeah, okay, this is good enough. Okay, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to be analyzing this with an engine now. I'm going to uh, analyze it with an engine after I'd finished my own analysis. I don't want to just turn on the engine after the game and see what happened. I want to figure it out for myself first. Thank you for watching. Sorry for the screen being, being messed up. Hopefully it works tomorrow. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.